Hello everyone, this is Miss Brown, and um, I'm hoping you all are doing well. Let's hope by now that you have um, found yourself at home with all of your loved ones, your family, and friends that you've known probably since elementary school. I'll make commentary about um, what just happened um, at the end of this. I first of all want to say one thing. Had I known that our last class meeting was indeed our last class meeting, I would have sent us off with a little bit more of a shebang than just 10 minutes and let y'all be dismissed. I truly miss you all. I miss our conversations. Our, I miss our conversations that we had yet to come. But um, you guys have been an, an amazing class overall. And um, I'm gonna miss all of you as far as in that specific class. But, um, oh well, things happen that is beyond our control. But I'll again address those things later. First of all, I know you guys are dying to hear what is next in store for us here uh, in critical thinking. Obviously, we are an online class. With 40 people and this not being a lecture-based class, it would be very difficult in any type of situation to, well, it wouldn't be difficult, it would just um, take a lot to put us all in a type of classroom to give instruction and then do discussion. Let me look at that option uh, for the next uh, week or two so I can see if we can even have one more uh, discussion in a group setting. Um, and that would be through an application called Zoom. Uh, Zoom is a, a conference-based application. Maybe some of you guys have already used it in uh, high school. You may have used it at Fisk to someone else or you may have gone into seminars for everything these days for um, classes to uh, sales pitches and things of that sort. Uh, but it's easy to download and you can download it to your computer as well as to your phone and your iPad. Um, it's a very easy application to use. If I were you, I would download this at least to my phone and my iPad so that uh, you can have that uh, as a resource because we'll be using these types of conference-based online live video types of formatting in order to teach you all in the future. The way we're going right now, you guys, this is going to be the future as far as um, virtual uh, classroom and virtual learning. Your larger institutions have been doing this type of learning for a few years now. So Fish University has begun the process of doing this. Many of you guys are already taking blended or hybrid type of classes. Some of your classes are strictly online. Um, so this is gonna become the, the wave of the future, so to speak. So um, more of your classes will be going online as we progress. So let me talk about what's going to happen in this specific class for the remainder of the semester. Um, first of all, just looking at some notes here. Some of you were not able to take the uh, writing assessment that was uh, given in class a few weeks back. We did some quotes on Will Smith and the students were asked to choose at least one quote and elaborate on that quote, how that quote moves them, their feelings, all of that. Those of you who did not take the writing assessment, I'm going to be giving a writing assessment on March the 25th, which is next Wednesday. The assessment time will be the same time for the class itself, from 4 o'clock uh, p.m. Central Daylight Time to 6 o'clock p.m. Central Daylight Time. All the times I'm giving you is in my time zone. Please make the adjustments based on where you are in the world on that specific day. If you did not take the writing assessment, the writing assessment will go online at 4.05 p.m. and will stay online until 6.05 p.m. Again, my time. That's when the assessment goes online. 
You can take as much time as you need to, but you must finish that assessment within that time. If you are still having issues with getting home, or if you are having issues with the internet, um, please let me know immediately. But many of you guys going home, you should not have said issues with the internet. You can go anywhere and use the internet. You can use it at the library, you can use it at Starbucks, you can use it at the grocery store, <laughs> you can use it at your church. There are too many places where there is <clears throat> an internet connection, at least in the United States and many parts of the world that is not a third world nation. Even some third world nations have internet services. So there is no excuse really regarding internet as long as you're able to connect somewhere, all right? Please, by the way, let your parents or whomever you are uh, living with know that you do need to have good running internet service for all of these online classes. Your professors after a while are not going to take that as an excuse, and I am one of them. Again, because there is so much accessibility to receiving an internet connection, even if you have to sit in a Starbucks. And you can, by the way, sit in Starbucks and McDonald's for free and, and catch on to their internet connections. You can even sit in McDonald's parking lot and catch their internet connections. So there is no excuse really for not getting into an internet environment in order for you to get your classwork done. You got the libraries as well. I know many places are going to close because of the coronavirus outbreak, but even many cities have citywide internet. Nashville certainly does, for example. You just get on uh, Xfinity Wi-Fi and you are in its um, internet web and the cost of that internet is not that expensive. In some cities, the city-based internet is, um, is free. So either get onto the city-based internet or find a place that is open for you to use the internet services um, and uh, please get connected. Many of these cities now know that college students as well as uh, K through 12 students are out of school and they know that an internet connection is necessary for learning. So there really isn't much of an excuse, all right? So get onto an internet connection and please keep up with all of your classes, not just this one. It will help us as your professors as well make sure that grades are posted on time, especially as we're coming very close to the end of the semester. And I'll discuss that as well. But those of you who, have, who did not take your writing assessment, please know that March 25th, I will be giving the writing assessment to you guys. On that same day, I am going to be giving a reading assessment to all of you who've already had the writing assessment. Oh, by the way, the writing assessment, that's going to be given on the 25th. It is not going to be Will Smith's quotes. It's going to be some other material that I want you to read and then uh, take care. The, um, and that's the writing assessment. The reading assessment is going to be on, on the same day at the same time during our class period of time. What I will be doing with the reading assessment is you're going to be reading a specific paragraph or I mean, a specific article that is, and I will be giving you some guidelines that you can, uh, that will help you rather write the paper that I am requiring. All of those guidelines will be in that assignment. That specific assignment, because there are things that I am asking for, that specific assignment, I will be um, posting it earlier in that day. It will post before three o'clock on that day so that uh, you can have a chance to um, read through what I am asking for. The actual reading uh, that I will give you will post at four o'clock. So you will go back into that assignment and you will see that actual reading that I'm asking you to do. And it's going to be a link to an article that I have found on the internet, which I think is going to be pretty interesting for you to read and give me some commentary on. Again, now if you've taken, if you've taken the writing assessment, the reading assessment comes online at the same exact time the class period is. If you've not done the initial writing assessment, you need to do that first. Get it out of the way because I will be readministering the reading exam on April 1st. 
you'll have a different article than your colleagues did on March the 25th. But on April 1st, I will be doing the exact same thing for the reading assessment and that article will come back up on April 1st. So let me uh, take care of both of those assessments. And you're wondering why these assessments are important. It helps us gauge you regarding your critical thinking skills, as well as what you have been learning in critical thinking. It also allows me to see your writing style and help give you some advisement regarding how to convey your thought. Because remember, you are in an academic environment, whether online or live, you're in an academic environment and you need to be able to communicate to scholars and other people within this environment in the way that people talk in this environment. You don't have to have big, large, elaborative words in order to talk in this, en in this environment, as well as the environment of your, of your future business, future jobs, work, etc., and of course, relations of others. Particularly if you're going into fields, for example, politics, sociology, psychology, physiology, all of that type of stuff. Well, physiology was I was thinking. Psychology more so, I was thinking that one. But uh, as you're going into specific fields where uh, dialogue is so necessary, particularly uh, the law, sociology, etc. So this is why these assessments are given to you so that you can fully see where you are regarding how you are communicating and where you need to be, let's say in four years from now when you graduate. So again, the repeat, writing assessment, which was, this, which was already given to most of your colleagues. If you missed it, I will be giving it on March 25th. At the same time, I will be giving the reading assessment to everyone who's already had the writing assessment. So you'll see those two assignments in the canvas. For the writing assessment, your assessment goes online at 4.05 p.m. Central Daylight Time. It will come offline at 6.05 p.m. It must be done within that span of time. I will not reopen that reading, sorry, that writing assessment. For those of you who are taking the reading assessment on that day, at three o'clock Central Daylight Time, or before that time, I would place the assignment and give you what I am looking for so you can already have, you can already have that, the instructions read and understood. Then at 4.05 p.m., I will be putting in the link for the reading assessment that you will be giving, all right, that you'll be writing on, all right? All the assignments need to be uploaded into Canvas by 6.05 p.m. for both of these. On April 1st, those of you who uh, were taking the writing assessment the week before, you'll be now taking the reading assessment. That assignment goes online at 3 o'clock like it did before with just all of the instructions that I'm requiring. And at four o'clock, you'll see the, the link that you'll be asked to read, and then you'll be asked to write on. You'll be given the amount of pages, words, all that type of stuff when you read the instructions. And I promise you, it's not gonna be a whole lot of stuff that you need to give, all right? So those are those two assignments. The next one, I will open certain assignments on March the 25th, and the time span to get those done is March the 25th through April 1st. For the exception of the reading and the writing assessment, those will not be open, but every other, most of the other assignments will be open for the exception of the first one. I believe most of you have done the first one. So basically the MLK assignment, the um, what is privilege assignment, um, I think there's one more. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Those will be open from March the 25th to April the 1st. It will close at 6 p.m. April 1st. It will open at 6 p.m. March the 25th, Central Daylight Time, for the timing there. You'll only have one week to fulfill any missed assignments. All missed assignments will now receive a B, not a B plus, unless the paper is extraordinary but a B is what the paper will receive, okay? That is the highest grade it will receive. Someone has asked about um, absenteeism and things of that sort. Is there going to be a, um, 
um, um, a type of uh, extra credit for missing classes? Unfortunately, no. We want you to understand that attendance is something that should be a part of you, to be there and on time and present. Present is not just sitting in a chair, but present is interacting with the class, participating in the class, and being there when the class is in session and being able to communicate or at least be part of the conversations going on. That's what is really necessary, not only just in this class, but in every class. So giving extra credit to make up for a loss of attendance is really not fair to those who have been in attendance as the syllabus required. So I will not be given any extra credit for attendance. At this point, it is as it is, all right? And you're wondering, how am I going to be taking attendance on Canvas? Believe it or not, there is a way that Canvas does uh, calculate attendance and it shows on my end. On your end, it will probably show the fact that you went on Canvas. On my end, it's going to show uh, when you came on Canvas, what you came on for, how long you were on, all of that type of stuff. And I'll be using that as a gauge for the remaining classes for this um, semester, for this class. Many of you have asked about your service learning projects. If you did any service learning um, while you were here at FISC, because I know many of you have scholarships that require at least 50 hours of service learning. If you've done any service learning, pull 10 of those hours out, and I will be giving you an assignment to also back up that service learning. It will be another PowerPoint. You will be asked to do a PowerPoint presentation basically no more than three to five slides about your service learning project. If you are doing service learning project out of town, I believe we are permitting that. If there is a change on that, I will let you know, but we will permit you to do a service learning project to fulfill the assignment. Now, service learning projects away from Fisk University to take care of your scholarships, you need to talk to someone in financial aid or whoever gave out the scholarship in order to make that agreement. But for this class and this class only, I will permit you to do service learning projects in your hometown. The last day, you only need to do 10 hours, all right? If you've already done 10 hours, you're good as golden. If you are able to get into, if you did it through my volunteer, that'd be great. Um, if you did it through any other means and you were not able to log on to my volunteer, all you need to do is to have someone uh, uh, put a timesheet or whatever and have someone send an email saying that you did a certain number of hours. If they're able to fill in a timesheet and send it to you, that'd be great. Otherwise, an email with them saying that you, that you have fulfilled a certain number of hours under their watch is sufficient and fine. And I think that may be fine for most situations anyway. 10 hours, that is due on April the 8th. All right, it is now April the um, 17th. So you have plenty of time to put in 10 hours of service. All right. I know with the coronavirus outbreak and everything, there may not be as many opportunities. I will gauge this as the uh, virus outbreak happens and I will give you any updates to this assignment once I have information as things go along. All right. And um, that's it for now. Um, I'm trying to think if I have forgotten anything. Um, these are the current uh, assignments. Yes, I did forget something. Uh, I think some of y'all were just saying it. What about the group assignment for the critical thinking project? Well, I've already talked to Dr. Peters as well for her suggestions. Um, if you guys are already doing work within your group, and you can find a way of putting together your assignment. It can be many edited videos that you're putting together into one massive video. It could be that. It can be a PowerPoint presentation at this point with pictures, 
to show the uh, to show what you're trying to do. It could be stills, it could be videos, it could be drawn projects, whatever. Put it together in a very creative way. It doesn't have to be a video at this point. It could be a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, when I mean PowerPoint slides, whatever, Prezi, whatever other presentation you're doing. It could be videos. You could put together a video slide. Um, some type of way. If you want to still remain as a group, which I would rather you guys do, um, you can put together that specific um, project, all right, in that way. I will be doing a separate video on what that should be looking like. But a critical thinking project should be something that talks about critical thinking. Um, Dr. Anthony Williams, who teaches music, used to teach critical thinking. And he said one of the critical thinking videos that uh, a class did was what to do when you see an active shooter on campus. And everybody started wondering what to do in a situation. One student uh, was the active shooter and everybody was getting all scared and, and crazy stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, they basically came up with a critical thinking skill. What do I do if I hear a gunshot? I duck. You know, all that type of stuff. You basically take a situation of life or a situation in business or a situation that you're involved with, whatever you want to do with that, and come up with a critical thinking video. It could be a PowerPoint presentation at this point because I know you guys are now separated. Some of you guys may be in the same city. Some of you guys may have already done some work towards this project and all you need to do is complete it. Individual videos that you can put together as a video presentation, that would be great. And some of us do have that type of software on our cell phones and iPads. So, um, you know, if, if someone does a video in their city and someone else's city and someone else's city, etc., and you put it all together as one thing, that would be real cool. Now, if you cannot get together in your group, especially if situations are such that it is not necessarily possible simply because of timing or whatever, I need you to contact me and I will let you know how to do this. At this point, if it's just two of you guys doing it, that would be fine. If it's three of you guys doing it, that would be fine. If two groups want to come together and do it, I'm cool with that. I would rather have a group dynamic than a solo person doing this project. I mean, somehow you're going to have to become creative, do little separate little things, put it all together in a mass production, and call it your production. Five to seven minutes, really no more. Three is um, a little short, but five to seven would be the most ideal. If you get up to 10 minutes, that's fine too. It could be humorous, it could be serious, it could be instructional. However, I'm going to be sending to you guys a little bit more instruction on uh, today or tomorrow to let you know what I'm looking for in those projects. When is that project due? That project has to be done by the 8th of April because I need to grade them. <laughs> so by the 8th of April, I need that project done as well. That's the week before the last day of classes for this class. Projects that are done, once I review them, I'm going to be putting them on display that you can watch them yourself, the, all of them. And then I will be submitting one or two to the remaining faculty. I believe we're gonna still do that competition. So um, I'll give you more information on that competition. I don't know what the prize is, but um, we'll be doing that competition still. And it'll be something to share with other classes and uh, to keep us all encouraged. Papers and everything else that I need to uh, finish up, I am grading those. As we speak, now that I have a little downtime, I can uh, do a lot of grading and get all of that type of stuff done. Hopefully within two weeks I can get it done. I will not do an at-risk survey for this class simply because I do need to catch up. Um, don't worry about midterm posted grades right now. Remember, the grade was only going to be soft. I may post the midterm grade anyway so that you'll see where you are. If you have any questions regarding where you are, you simply need to email me and I will let you know. But if you've turned in everything and have been consistent with your attendance, you're not at risk at this specific point. Because many of you have were, that who were at risk prior have kind of cleared yourself up with that at risk at this present time. 
So that's it. I know that took about 25 minutes in order to um, assimilate all that we need to be doing. So everything else is going to be online. I may have one uh, class period on Zoom. Let me see how that's going to look and uh, I'll let you know. A couple of things regarding this type of instruction for all of us teachers. Remember, even though you are at home, you are still in classes at the specific times and days in which your class meets. Whether or not your professor is, your professor is doing a live presentation, pre-recorded, whatever, you are still in class at that specific day and time that will allow the professor to maybe say, I'm gonna do a live presentation. Now don't worry, professors are going to let you know in advance if they're gonna do anything live that will require you to be right there with them, all right? So don't you know start finding a job or anything of that sort at a time when you are normally in class because guess what? you are still a student at Fisk University. And um, much to you guys' excitement, remember, Fisk decided to go to the end of the semester. That means you need to now go to the end of the semester and understand that you are still a student. I'm glad they did it this way so that you'll be able to finish out the semester and making sure that you have all of your coursework done and anything you're behind in, you're able to catch up and um, get right back on track. Regarding all the things that has happened since you've been freshmen, it has been a very weird year for you guys. It has been a crazy year for you guys, but it's been a crazy and weird year for many of us on faculty as well. And as much as we're trying to make sure that you have uh, everything you need for your instruction and everything else. There's a few things that nobody could have anticipated in this semester, specifically for you guys who are freshmen. Leaving campus the way you did this week, especially finding out that you guys were told to leave on uh, today, Tuesday the 17th, rather than Saturday. That means you had to rush in order to get things done. There's some things you missed not being here at the end of the semester. That end of the semester cramming that is unique in the, in the spring, uh, it just feels like you're really cramming then. The bloom of all the trees, you saw the dogwoods already come out. The spring in the air that is quite unique to Nashville. Parties on 17th by the fraternities and the sororities and everybody else. A proper campaign week for all of the um, the election for Miss Fisk and everything else. I think you guys didn't have a Miss Fisk pageant in the process of everything. The Arts Festival. It's a great, amazing time to see beautiful art, music, uh, uh, drama, everything. And the production that they're putting on is an incredible production. Choir Boy. It's a beautiful show, and hopefully they'll do it in the, in the fall or in the spring uh, next year. But a few other things you miss. You miss seeing people walk around the campus with spring love in the air. You see new couples come around. Yeah, we know. It happened to us too, especially being on this campus. You miss seniors finishing their last classes and running out on the middle of 17th, screaming, I'm done, I'm done, and shouting and praising the Lord and putting on their own music and running up and down 17th or sometimes standing in the middle of 17th crying or even on their knees. Believe it or not, that's something to see when your senior colleagues can say, it's done. and being able to properly say goodbye to your friends and say, yo, catch up with me in the summer if you're gonna be in my city or hey, I'll see you in the fall. How to have the whole world slow down and you take an exhale and say, hey, let's look up. Let's do something in the summer. I'll see you. Man, there's a lot of things you miss and, and many more. I pray that in spite of all of that, 
your experiences have, at Fisk has been positive to some degree. Please, please understand that what happened over the past few days has been happening at many universities all over the United States, including some overseas. It has been a very difficult process. Who would have ever thunk times like this would happen for us? But we're here now. I want you to relax. Stay encouraged. If you need me to do a video to encourage you guys every day, I will do a five to 10 minute video to encourage you every day. I promise if that's what you need, I will do it. But stay encouraged yourself. Don't go into depression and don't go into a panic mode. We're all still here. Your professors, those whom you, whom you love, we're all still here. We're all still here for you. Now, I will be doing a video letting you know specifically when registration is going to begin and what to anticipate with that. For now, I would advise you to also connect with your advisors. Your advisors should be contacting you shortly uh, regarding a virtual um, advisement session. Do not register for classes without being advised. There are many students who come into their senior year and without proper advisement, they find that they are not yet ready to graduate because they did not take the right courses for their major or didn't take specific courses or in some cases forgot that, especially under a Bachelor of Arts, they have a lot of electives to collect. So please plan to be advised. If you do not know who your advisor is, do go to the discipline uh, uh, chairperson or the department chairperson of the major that you truly now want to you know, be a part. If you still do not have an advisor and you're uncertain about your major, contact the, re you're uncertain about what you want to major in, et cetera, contact the registrar's office or you can try to contact me and I can see if I can put you in the right direction. But the registrar should be the best uh, resource for that. I want you to be safe. I want you to be strong and know that you are well loved by me and by everyone here at Fisk. Oh, by the way, some of you are in cities where there is a Fisk club. If you want to know your Fisk club city, you can simply call Miss um, uh, Latham in Alumni Affairs, which is in the uh, um, development office, um, and she can help you find the president of the alumni club in your area. It's good to hook up with the uh, alumni Fiskites, letting them know that you're home and uh, especially if you need some help and resources, they can hopefully help you out as well, especially those of you who received some sort of a scholarship through them. I think that's all, it's 32 minutes. And believe it or not, this was today's instruction just to get you caught up and just to um, uh, make sure that you understand where we're going from this point on. Um, as far as any extra papers or anything like that, I will let you know if that is going to be the case. But for right now, let's deal with what I've already given you. Meanwhile, I want you to be blessed and happy. And I am here when you need me, as I've already said, already said. Love you. And we'll talk to you later.